Let's talk about peeps. Let's talk about peep height. Peep Let's size. talk about peeps, peep. baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about big holes, small holes, all kind of holes. Well, that's going to be in the video. <laughs> no, please, God, don't do that. All right, guys. Welcome to the YouTube channel. We got MFJJ. We're talking peeps. What the peep, peep height, peep size. We're going to make sure that this is a video that you're going to want to watch if you really want to understand how to have the best sight picture. Come along and you're going to learn a few things about peeps. All right, Josh, so peep height. Yeah. Peep size. Yeah. Peeps that rotate and drive me nuts. Peeps, man, let's talk about peeps. What do you want to talk about first? Well, peep height is a hard one to actually get effectively without the person present, because in a, in a perfect world, when you're drawing the bow back and anchoring in, your head would be in an upright, relaxed position, not tip down, but also your nose needs to touch the string in order to do it right, and not this side of your nose, the tip of your nose. And that's gonna strongly determine where the peep's gonna belong. So saying how high a peep should be is very, very difficult to say. Your axle to axle length changes that, your draw length changes that, the string angle has a lot to do with that. If you, if you have one that works and you're happy with it, all you really need to do in that scenario is put an arrow in it, draw it back, have somebody measure from the top of your arrow or the center of your arrow, as long as you take the same measurement, to the center of your peep at draw, yeah. and then put it in the new bow draw it back and move the peep up to where it lines up with that number and that should line up exactly the same. Uh, trying to determine the size of peep that you need varies a lot and once again the axle to axle length of a bow, the draw length of your bow, the size of your front sight housing is going to be a large contributor to what size actually fits because what you're trying to do is draw the bow back, get your head in an appropriate position, look through the peep and see all the way around the sight housing with a tiny little bit of daylight. So like a circle on a circle. That's the idea and that's the premise. <laughs> now, a lot of bows aren't gonna allow you to see a circle on a circle because you're gonna lose a portion of the side of the sight. If you're a right-handed person, there's gonna be a little bit of the right hand of the circle that's behind the riser. That's not a bad thing, don't let that alarm you. You're just trying to do round on round like a peep on a ring. That's what you're trying to see. Uh, in most configurations, uh, a 3 16 is probably going to be too small. You need to set these things outside when you look through it. Do not draw it back in a bow shop inside, look through it and go, yeah, that frames up perfect. And then you go outside in real daylight and now it looks a 16th too small, a 32nd too small, sometimes almost an eighth too small. Because yeah. real light makes everything crisper, mm -hmm. so it makes the hole look smaller. That's what you need to frame on. So whenever you're trying to set that and you think you found the right size, walk outside on a sunny day and drop back and look through. And we're mainly talking bow hunting rigs, guys. Like if you're a target archer, you probably do indoors. You need to probably set a peep for that. But we're talking hunting applications. Well, and you're using a smaller housing in target anyway. Yeah. So you're probably gonna end up with a smaller peep. And you're cheating with clarifiers and magnification. I didn't call it cheating. I just said... Uh, Attempting to improve vision. Yes, exactly. If so it's within the rules, it's acceptable. So you're looking at... 732 or quarter is probably did you say more. 732 yes i said 732 now there's not a lot of peeps available in 732 wow. so this is 3 16 and this might be a tiny bit small but you do have a longer axle to axle bow and a shorter draw length so your peep is going to show up closer to your eyeball yep. as you get that shorter axle to axle length the string's coming back at a steeper angle so if you measure up from the shaft an equal amount that peeps farther away from your eye the farther away from your eye, the smaller this hole's gonna look, thus the bigger it needs to be. Which is why this is a 3 16th on a longer bow, and this is a 732 on a shorter bow, and that tends to frame good for Dan with a I think I 20 changed this to a quarter inch. No, that's got is a, it. Is it? You see the reveal in there? Oh, There's you're right. Line. That's a 732. Nice. So you have a uh, 27? Yep. All right, so a 27 inch draw length is going to be a closer parameter so your peep is closer to your eye than somebody with a 28 or a 29 inch draw length. Yep. So if you have a longer draw length than that your hole size is probably going to need to be bigger. So what you're seeing here is actually smaller than average. If you're 28 or 29 inches this right. is probably more like a 732 and this is more like a quarter. I have a 30 inch draw length and I'm usually using at least a 31 32 inch axle to axle bow in most applications 
and a quarter is almost too small for me on an inch and three quarter size housing like that. If you get a bigger site housing here, you need a bigger peak and they don't really make ones bigger. There is one or two brands out there that make one above a quarter. It's a 732. Um, Pine Ridge makes a 732 oh. and G5 uh, made a, a titanium one that was 732. Was I haven't seen those. Peak? It was the Meta um, titanium, yep. but when those first came out, they were really sharp and they cut some strings and oh. I don't know if those are still in circulation or not. Uh, but the only one I know of off the top of my head, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong because I'm just shooting off the top of my head here, uh, is Pine Ridge makes a 732 if you need that. Um, I use, like I said, an inch and three quarter front housing and a quarter inch peep and that works for me. Yeah. Um, and if you, so if you have a longer draw or a shorter axle to axle bow in that application, you probably need a bigger one. Or if you use a big dog housing, like a two or a two and a quarter yeah, housing. What's a common manufacturer of a two, uh, what, what spot hogs with the ring and everything? The big one, the bigger ring is like two inch. Um, so you're gonna have a harder time finding a peep that what truly frames that. What about or HHAs or CVE? Almost everyone makes an inch and three quarter and then they make a, what I call a big dog and some actually call them big dog, um, is a larger housing. I, I don't want to tell people what to use or try to yeah, force you, you do. to do. Well, don't use something that big. It's just, it doesn't frame. Now you're going to end up feeling like you need a small peep because you're trying to center on the pin instead of the housing. Ideally, what you're looking for is a comfortable clean sight picture that your peep frames your housing and you line those two up, not the pin, and then get on your target. Now, if you're like me and you're using a single pin like this, that's kind of the beauty of your single pin is the pin is in the middle of the housing. Yeah. So you're framing on a frame on a frame and it's just a little more pleasing to the mind to focus and aim with that. It's a little simpler. Um, and then within peeps, there's a whole variety of things. Um, Kamsky makes uh, an insight peep, which just is probably your most elaborate thing. There's all kinds of different sizes you can thread inside your peep. This is more of a target related thing, but there's an amazing amount of versatility of choices in that regard. Um, they also make a Raptor peep, which that's a quarter inch housing. It's an elongated peep that's tapered. The purpose of this is that it's not square on your circle, it's angled on your circle. So if your peep ends up a little tipped left or a little tipped right, which is really common, yeah. people deal with that all the time, the circle looks the same. It doesn't start to look like an oval as it rotates. It maintains its shape and dimension. So, And a lot can go time. wrong when you party yeah. with elk hunting. Like guys, oh, God, you, yeah. like that, could save your bacon if you know for whatever reason your your D loop twisted a little. You pull back and you got this oval on a circle. It, you could freak out a little bit or feel like I don't know what's going on with my sight picture or it's low light. Low light. I've ran that. Light. It's pretty awesome. Low light's a killer in those situations too. Yeah. You start to get to where the circle doesn't look quite right and then it's starting to get fuzzy and it just fades out faster. So it, the more you can maintain a circle, the easier it is for your eye to constrict and focus on those things. Uh, and then we just have standard rad peeps, which we carry them in three different sizes. That's uh, 3 16 that's 732, and that's quarter and a bunch of different colors. And that's mainly what we run in here. Are you selling those on uh, 730 seconds on uh, yeah. Yeah, we have your them on the website. site? Yeah. That's pretty cool, guys. I've looked around at other shops. A lot of shops don't have that. So that's a pretty cheap purchase, too. There's nothing to ship that to you. So check out Podium Marcher for that, man. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's actually an incredibly common fitting size that almost nobody carries right. if you're trying to perfectly frame it. Mm -hmm. um, it. Like I said, if you're up to a 30, this is probably a little too small, but almost everyone within like 28, 29 inch on your average configuration, this is actually the size that fits if you try them. But uh, most places only carry a 3 16 or a quarter. Um, there's some polymer peeps out there or, okay. or fiber or what have you. We just had one in yesterday that uh, is similar to the Hamski style where it's like a taper. Um, I don't know if they've corrected this, but the one that we got in the other day was starting to cave in and collapse. Um, so I, I still have a hard time using something that isn't um, aluminum because I've yet to have peeps made of aluminum collapse Okay. over time. And that's what uh, even, these are all on, made out of? Yeah, they're all aluminum. Even okay. on like a dry fire, they still don't seem to collapse. Um, one particular manufacturer was really popular making magnesium peeps. Uh, I'm not sure if they're still using magnesium peeps, but anything that was like a quarter size over like two years just started to cave in and collapse. Mm. So, and then there's another manufacturer that was using plastic ones that over time would just start to crush. Now, so, wait a second. Are you doing a video on your channel on tying in peeps? Yeah, I, somebody requested uh, that, so that'll be one of our little Toontep 
week. I'll drop the link, and that means you guys got to film this and edit it. It was this week or next week. Okay, I'll drop the link right somewhere up in this top screen here. I'll put a link to his video on tying it in. And uh, let me just do a couple quick questions, gun to your head. So now you got to answer. Uh, I got my bow set up. Uh -huh. I just need to tie in the peak. Okay. Do I do it at 20 yards or do you oh, have 40 gotcha. yards? Well, a lot of that depends on how far you want to shoot and what kind of sight you have. So if you have a single pin sight, yep. which I think this was one I got a, a question about how to set up a single pin sight. Okay. Uh, so we were going to do a, a little bit more of an elaborate video on it. But a basis of it is if you're trying to shoot, let's say for the sake of argument, 20 to 70 yards. Let's say that's your parameter you want to shoot and you want to set up your bow for that application for that purpose. You would probably set your sight around 40, 45 yards. Okay. So roughly get your peep set. If you can, put like a soft tie in it so it yeah. can't fly out of the string. Yep. And then go outside, find your 20, which you should have found your 20 when you got your peep sight to set originally just to make sure it's close. And then figure out where about 45 yards is. Move your sight down to where it's at 45 yards and then keep moving your peep down in the string until those two line up to where the anchor point feels right, the head position feels right, and you're impacting at 45 yards. Then tie your peep in in that position, yep. then go back and figure out where 20 is from there. So when you're in the middle of your adjustment range, it's ideal. When you're at the top of your adjustment range, you'll be pushing into your string a little bit. Sure. And when you're at the bottom of your adjusting range, hopefully your nose is still touching the string. Because yep. as you move that sight up and down, your head's gonna move up and down a little bit with it to frame equally. So that's where that becomes relevant of what distance you would set that at. If you're using like a, a multiple pin mover, yep. like um, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, but it also slides on a chassis, I am a, a firm believer in setting that for 20 to 60 because that's really the purpose of that sight. Yeah. So move that all the way up to the top, move your 20 to where it's where you want it, frame your peep on that and tie it into that. Because that the scenario of using that sight is like a, a Hail Mary. You're dropping it out to 90 or something yeah. on probably. On That's actually literally defines my elk hunting style is 60 and under mm -hmm. and follow up shots if need be. Yeah, if you, you know? if you hit something and it's not dead and there's a parameter they're going to let you get before they get up yeah. and try to move, uh, it'd be much better to have a setting for that than not. And in that scenario, your head's going to come off the string a little bit, but at least you have a reference. And it's about as accurate as you're going to make it. But the important shots, the ones that are really critical, your right. 20 to 60s, you're basing it off of that. So it's really what distance is most important for you to shoot it at and frame it for that. Last question. Yeah. Dovetails. Starting. Longer. Starting. <laughs> yeah. I know that. I know that. I, I don't Why, run dovetails. Right? Yeah. Okay, but for the so, guys that do kick those sights way out further, does that go against what we've already said on peep sizes? So, um, yeah, if you're moving it out farther, your housing is going to be smaller and you can probably get away with a smaller peep, which once again, why you see target guys using smaller peeps. They're using dovetails. They're moving their sight away from them. There's a couple reasons for that. Yep. It's really more, I've got a lens in here and the farther I get it away from my eye, the more the magnification is. So that's part of why they're moving them away. Um, from a hunting scenario, I, I just really disagree with dovetails and I disagree with dovetails for a couple reasons. One, there's more bolts. There's more hardware. There's more things trying to hold your sight in place. You better silver sharpie that thing. You better mark it and make sure you are able to put it back. And you gotta check it periodically because there's a knob on there or something that's holding it in place. And that's now three screws to hold your sight in place instead of two. Yeah. That's one more thing that can go wrong. And it's a sliding piece of metal inside a sliding piece of metal, not a direct mount. That's yeah. just, you're, you're, you'll, you should never have your dovetail mount, the part that bolts on your bow come loose, but you might have your dovetail come loose a lot. Ideal, not an ideal thing in running around in the woods, throwing it on a four wheeler, taking off for five miles, bouncing around, hoping it doesn't vibrate loose and fall off two miles back. Not something that happens commonly, but it is something that can happen. And two, the farther you move your side away from your pivot point or your hand where it touches the bow, the more you're gonna miss by. It's simple logic. You magnify your torque. A yeah, bit. so yeah. if you torque your bow a little left or right, which let's face it, we all do. Not me. To a some degree. <laughs> little or a lot, you're gonna get some. The farther you move that side away from your hand, the more it's gonna amplify that error. So by having a six inch dovetail hanging out there, instead of you know three inches of mounting base, you've doubled your error. It's not more accurate, folks, it's less accurate. Yeah, and your heart rate's gonna be already high when that species comes in, and you've worked really hard for this one shot opportunity. You're gonna feel perceived pressure. I believe the phrase is kiss. Uh, Keep it simple, stupid. 100%. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed us kind of breaking things down for you and, and really just leaning on Josh's 
25, 30 years of working in an archery shop. So go ahead and check out his channel. I'm gonna drop a link at the end of the show here so you guys can check out Josh's channel. They cover different manufacturers as well as more tech tunes and tips and tactics on just specific to archery. Great new channel, check it out. They're growing strong, their growth, their success is our success. So support them. And if you dig what we do, tap that subscribe button and uh, stay tuned for more awesome elk-shaped content.